Has there ever been a nerf product launch more hated than the Ultra Dart? Well, yeah, obviously, the initial launch of the Mega Line with the Centurion wasn't exactly celebrated either. The Ultra Dart has at least one thing going for it, though, and that hasn't really been explored all that much. The fact that it's a similar diameter to the old school Mega Dart. The old school Mega was different from your modern Elite or new Mega Darts, and there hasn't been a blaster in decades that fires them. And old school Mega Darts are pretty expensive to come by, and being made out of foam, they don't exactly last that long on the battlefield either. Not that they fly all that well to begin with, that's for sure. But this compatibility is rather exciting, because this does mean that potentially a dart that is readily available for you to buy it pretty much anywhere could be compatible with your old vintage nerf blasters, like say, I don't know... How about the 1994 Nerf Rattler from the Max Force line that has a Super Soaker named after the exact same thing, which is a little confusing? Or the 1995 Nerf Sharpshooter, a really cool blaster that was the successor to the original Sharpshooter in the Nerf line. Or one of the coolest blasters ever, the 1997 Nerf Ratchet Blast from the Cyber Strike line, a break-action one-handed vintage Nerf blaster. Seriously, this thing is absolutely awesome. Or maybe the 2003 variant of the Tech Target Blaster, not the new one, but the old one that fired Mega Darts. Or if that wasn't good enough for you, how about the Unicorn that is the Switch Shotch Ultra? A blaster that has like seven other blasters named after it, but fires both darts and is a super soaker. Or maybe the absolutely legendary 1995 Kenner Crossbow. Yeah, baby, this thing is absolutely amazing in every category. So theoretically, this could lead to the Ultra Dart bringing new life to these vintage blasters and allowing nerfers all over the world to use blasters they haven't been able to fire in decades. So let's do some light modifications like removing the dart posts to a few of them to get these effortlessly feeding nerf ultra and see which one may actually make you want to use your old blasters on the modern foam battlefields. Well, right off the bat in this Foam Blaster Battle Royale, the Rattler has failed hard. This one was modified before it was sent to me, and it didn't have any dart posts inside of it, but since the Ultra Ammo doesn't compress or seal much, the air just kinda leaks around them. Bummer, but let's move on to removing the dart posts out of a few of these, starting with the Switch Shots Ultra. So with the Switch Shots Ultra here, I figured I could just undo the three screws at the front of the blaster to take apart the yellow thing and get access to the barrel system, and hey, that would be awesome if I wanted to do a rebarrel for something else in the future, because this blaster is amazingly cool, but unfortunately that didn't work. So I tried to take apart the entire blaster, poking and prying and undo every screw and figuring out that, yeah, the very front of the blaster is actually glued together, so you can't easily disassemble this thing and well that's just way too much effort for me but I did figure out that hey the dart posts are right there so why don't I grab a pair of pliers and try to twist break them off and wow that was that was shockingly easy this broke clean off without any effort whatsoever and that theoretically means that now the ultra darts can sit all the way back in there and I've never actually tried to fire this thing at all so we'll pump it up a couple of times and pull the trigger and wouldn't you know it it's a shotgun the first Nerf Ultra Shotgun. Now we're moving on to modifying the old school 2003 Tech Target Blaster. Sometimes erroneously called the Tech Target Eliminator, but it is actually designated as the Tech Target Blaster. Hey, I've been inside one of these things before, so just take it apart ever so gently, undo all the screws, pop it apart, there's nothing really surprising here, and just effortlessly remove this little piece, none of it's glued together, and snap off the dart post. You could probably also just pry it out, but I decided to take the entire thing apart anyway, because I really like the Tech Target Blaster, more people need to see how this thing looks, because it's like a Night Finder, but way cooler. Fit everything back together, load it with a Mega Dart to make sure it actually still fires, Hey, that works perfectly fine. Load in an Ultra Dart and find out we have a similar problem to the Rattler. This thing 
will not fire a dart because it just doesn't seal around it, unfortunately. The air just kind of leaks around it. So that is another blaster removed from the workbench. Moving on to the Ratchet Blast. This is one of my favorite blasters. The problem is they're incredibly fragile, so I'm already kind of regretting taking this thing apart, but just undo the very beefy screws that Kenner used to use back in the early 90s, open it up, and... Well, it's, it's kind of a weird blaster inside, that's for sure. It's got a flip break action thing that indexes the cylinder and find out that you could have easily just twisted these things off. I never had to take this blaster apart whatsoever. I could just grab some pliers, grab the black things, and twist them off. I don't even know if they were glued, to be perfectly honest. I think if I really wanted to, I could have just put these dart posts back in. What a weird, weird blaster. The cool thing is, what you don't have to see is the 25 minutes of me cussing trying to put this damned thing back together because it was a nightmare with how it's designed. But we get it working and uh, same problem as the Rattler and of course the old school tech target blaster. This thing just does not work with Ultra, which means we've got three blasters left. We'll start with the Sharpshooter 2, and the range is absolutely pathetic. You can toss darts farther than this thing will actually shoot. Cool blaster, but definitely not worth rebarreling for Ultra. <laughs> Next up is the one I'm probably the most excited for. We've got the Switch Shots Ultra, the first Nerf Ultra shotgun. Pump it up a couple of times, pull that trigger, and find out that it's really not that much better than the Sharpshooter 2, unfortunately. But hey, I, that's just one shot. Let's try it again and find out. The thing does actually have a staggered trigger. I was really impressed by this. It might actually have two air tanks inside of it, and I kind of want to rebarrel this thing for normal darts, because it's absolutely awesome. But we really want to see probably the most important thing, the 1995 Kenner crossbow. This blaster is designed to shoot both old school Megas and its included arrows, being one of the first blasters to ever fire more than one ammo type, and even stock. This thing is a beast. Absolutely. It, it comes as no surprise because the Kenner crossbow has a massive plunger tube for what it is, but it effortlessly flings Ultra at pretty insane distances. It's amazing what Ultra can do with such little velocity. And you can see here, zooming in, it is an excellent blaster. This thing is war worthy with no modifications whatsoever. The 1995 crossbow does not have any air restrictor or dart posts or anything. You can find one of these things as long as you can prime it back and it catches and the seal is still working with that skirt seal it has inside. This blaster will fire. And that means that it is theoretically possible for you to right now Go to your local war with a crossbow and a pocket full of ultra darts and actually use this thing to tag people out with no modifications whatsoever. The idea of doing that just makes this so much better. Of all the blasters I have tested, the crossbow has been bar none the best. This thing is comparable to my Ultra Zero Jolt. And again, this is with no modification whatsoever. It's almost like the 1995 crossbow is made to fire ultra darts. It is so impressive. The barrel material is perfect. It gives a great seal around the dart. And yeah, the accuracy isn't quite there, but the distances and who knows if they ever fix ultra darts in the future, because not all ultra darts are made the same, but this could lead to the crossbow being a regular sighting and any stock nerf war. I am blown away. If you have a crossbow, do yourself a favor, pick up a box of Ultra and fling some foam. The first time you tag somebody out with one of these things at a war, you're going to become legendary. I shot so much firing footage here because I was blown away with how well this worked. And I I seriously can't wait until the first time I get to shoot somebody with an Ultra Dart from a crossbow. And that's a little bit of a problem because the crossbows are fragile. Mine's already making a worrying rattling sound every single time I move it. So there's probably something already broken off inside of it. But seriously, 
This is the lease on life I really wanted to see with the Ultra line. And this does mean there are potentially other blasters out there that fire Ultra just as well as the 1995 Crossbow. You know, the more I play around with the Ultra Dart, the more I like it. The more I'm starting to understand why it exists. I've demonstrated multiple times on this channel that Ultra Darts fly farther under the same power compared to any other dart I've tried. And that is possibly due to the lightweight, but they're also, every once in a while, accurate on top of that. I think the accuracy is the biggest problem with this dart, but not all Ultra Darts are made the same. As I've demonstrated previously, some of them snap in half the second you bend them, and other times they'll bend completely and half spring back and be completely fine. And they are a rather solid projectile, so there are things this dart can do that your normal nerf dart couldn't do. And you also have to keep in mind that there has been other ammo types in this ecosystem before. This actually was not the standard dart. It was the streamlined dart or the whistler or the suction, and there were people who hated every single types of those darts. And when this came out, it was pretty much way better, but at the same time, it still wasn't good enough. People were still making half-length darts, custom cast heads, glued to like foam backer on and stuff like that and when vortex came out it was way harder hitting than pretty much any other dart that came out before elite darts around the same time actually so vortex was actually really awesome but it wasn't that accurate you could bank shots and stuff with it which made it cool but it wasn't bad then we got rival and rival had the same kind of marketing and you know what even i fell for it Rival was accurate. That was one of the biggest things about it. And anytime I've used a Rival Blaster, the balls work just like a Vortex. They go straight for about 30 or 40 feet and then they just curve off randomly in a direction. And it was really frustrating. Springers do a better job than the Flywheelers, but we also didn't have really any good Rival Blasters for a long time. A lot of people really liked the Zeus. It wasn't a very good blaster. It was also extremely overpriced. And the Apollo was like the only thing you really had. And it was cool, but I mean, now, do anybody, do, do you use a Zeus or an Apollo? No, there's so many other options now. And you also have to keep in mind one of the reasons why I stuck with Boomco for so long. You know, 2014, 2013, Boomco was so much better than pretty much any other ammo type. The blasters weren't entirely there, but the ammo was durable, accurate, and it flew so well compared to any foam dart. Nowadays, we have... Adventure Force waffles we can go buy 200 of for at Walmart for 8 bucks, and of course there's half-length darts and jigs to cut half-length darts, and that's way more accessible now, and it's way more accepted. But here we are with Ultra, and everybody hates it, and I'm trying so hard to kind of say, wait a second, because even in my initial review of the Ultra 1, which is a terrible blaster, I'm not going to say the Ultra 1 is a good blaster by any means, but the dart itself has potential, I'm starting to see that. These things fly better than virtually any other ammo type I've gotten my hands on so far. And it's amazing what Ultra can do under such low power. If you were to compare 100 FPS, which is probably a video I'll do in the future, 100 FPS standard foam dart, 100 FPS rival, and 100 FPS Ultra, Mega, I think Ultra is going to be the best every single time. And I've kind of demonstrated that with my Ultra Zero build. And I'm excited to see what all the, like, the designs of blasters we're going to see in the future. Because this being a solid kind of projectile, which is rather durable, not all Ultra Darts are made the same, and that might have something to do with the accuracy, but it's a rather solid projectile. There could be a magazine tube blaster, like a lever action or something like that in the future, because these things don't compress and bend and break. These flip and do. They're garbo. This doesn't. Uh, I've lamented the fact that we haven't really had any breech-loading blasters that much. We just finally got the shell strike. But, like, the barrel break, right? Why hasn't there been an upgrade to the barrel break? And I'm thinking there's a reason for that. I think there's a toy law regulation. But the Ultra could go past that because it has this stupid dart DRM thing in it. So you can't fire anything out of it other than Ultra without modifying the blaster. And that could give Hasbro the ability to put out something like the Ultra Barrel Break. And would you seriously, like a break action, load two darts, close it, fire it, would you seriously not like that, even if it was firing this kind of ammunition? Because I think that would be amazing. And that's, this is the kind of dart that will do that 
and I'm really excited to see what happens with Ultra in the future. I've, I've already seen the leaked blasters, and I'm really excited for a couple of them. And I just, I, I can't wait to see what this whole line is capable of. Ultra definitely isn't something we need to write off yet. Let's give it another year or two. And even if you are complaining about the price and the dark DRM and stuff like that, at least when you get 20 or 30 of these for 10 bucks, they should be way more durable than your standard foam dart. You step on this thing once, it's done. This thing, it does not care. It really doesn't. It works pretty much the same every single time because it's almost a solid foam projectile. That being said, holy crap, it, it's just, the, the price is a little bit ridiculous. And I think my biggest complaint is one that uh, my friend Sabrina said. These things are almost impossible to find after you shoot them. I, I've lost so many of these. I had to watch videos days later go out there and find the darts because they're so hard to see out in grass or something like that. I'm really hoping they can change this body type. I'm guessing the reason why they haven't is because so the dye or something doesn't work, I'm guessing. There has to be a reason why these things are jet black with orange tips, but I'm excited. I really am. I We had so many other ammo types. I'm, we still have, like, Mega is still a thing. We still have Rival. Vortex has come and gone. I think this will fill its niche, though, and who knows? It might become the next best thing if they do manage to fix the accuracy issues with these. And from what I've seen from some of the blasters, I mean, there could be stuff in the future that will make these kind of awesome, but I've I've talked enough. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to get your name on my workbench, we're done with the gold names. Every name after this will be in black vinyl. That being said, those of you that become initial like black vinyl people, well, you'll stand out because there's so many gold names on the bench and that will be awesome. And going forward, five bucks a month on my Patreon. If it's interesting to you, check it out in the description below or on the card in the top right corner and get your name on my workbench and be in pretty much every video I ever made ever and every live stream. And thank you very much to all of these people who support the channel. And I really hope this video was worth the wait because I worked really hard on it. And I'll tell you what, if this video does get like something ridiculous, like 3,000 likes, I will paint my brand new crossbow in those Ultra 95 colors from Utter Travesty. That was a really cool picture that just stormed off my Instagram. And I mean, it has to be done, right? It, I mean, it has to be done. So please drop a like on this video if you enjoyed this content and if you liked the production values. But otherwise, I'm Walk on Seven. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need.